We are going to take a different approach with today's episode. Stay with me. This is probably going to be one of the more important, more significant episodes to help with the reduction of suffering within the simulation. If you're a new listener to this podcast, welcome. However, I would strongly advise that it's best to start listening from the beginning of the guide and in chronological order. This is, of course, just a suggestion, as I believe it will help you better understand some of the terminology I utilize and the manner in which it is used. That said, if you still feel compelled to continue listening, carry on. Now, there will be a lot of repetition in this episode. A lot. This is intentional. Your body's AI mind is very efficient when it comes to distracting your consciousness at the times in which you need to be conscious the most. The only way to circumvent this function is for me to repeat points while you grapple with the AI mind between lucidity and distraction. I will begin with a tale of two subscribers. Subscribers one and two are sitting across from each other in an office board meeting. Subscriber two makes a statement that subscriber one finds inflammatory. Subscriber one starts to voice his objections to subscriber two's views, but is interrupted halfway through by subscriber two. Annoyed, subscriber one slowly retorts, please do not cut me off while I'm speaking. I wasn't finished making my point. A tense silence engulfs the room as subscriber one attempts to conclude his point. Before subscriber one is able to conclude, however, subscriber two interjects yet again, this time accusing subscriber one of being ignorant about the specifics of the matter at hand. The other members at the meeting are shocked by subscriber two's behavior. Subscriber one has a fair bit of seniority over subscriber two, a fact that subscriber two seems to have forgotten. You can of course get what guess what happens next. As the conversation rapidly degrades into a confrontation I want to describe what has been happening behind the scenes, so to speak. Because you see, it is not two entities in conflict with one another here, but four. We have the consciousness of subscriber one and two. And we have two other unseen entities operating in the background. Upon entering into the simulation, each subscriber uploads their consciousness into the persona that they are presently inhabiting. Let's call subscriber one's persona, Bill, and subscriber two's persona, Ted. The personas, Bill and Ted, come pre-programmed with their own artificial intelligence mind, in which the consciousness of each subscriber adopts as their own. While in the simulation, each subscriber will believe that they are really Bill or really Ted, etc. A parallel analogy would be akin to the consciousness of Neo in the movie The Matrix 
adopting the persona of computer programmer Thomas A. Anderson within the simulation. Or you as a player assuming the persona of Lara Croft in their in a hyper immersive VR game of Tomb Raider. The AI minds are the CPUs of Bill, Ted, and any other persona within the simulation. They are pre-programmed into each persona's DNA code and have a standard modus operandi. The function of each persona's AI mind is to make the gameplay within a story mode reality as immersive as possible. The function of each persona's AI mind is to make the gameplay within a story mode reality as immersive as possible. It is activated by any perceived provocation to which it reacts with a default negative response. Where does the consciousness of the subscriber go when the AI mind is activated? Once the AI mind determines or classifies any interaction as an opportunity to engage the subscriber deeper into the simulation, it will autonomously begin an intensely hypnotic whisper campaign that serves to lull the consciousness of the subscriber into a trance-like state, locking said consciousness into its suggestions while simultaneously harnessing the creative powers of the conscious mind. That bears repeating. Once the AI mind determines or classifies any interaction as an opportunity to engage the subscriber deeper into the simulation, to immerse the subscriber's consciousness deeper into the simulation, it will autonomously begin an intensely hypnotic whisper campaign that serves to lull the consciousness of the subscriber into a trance-like state, locking said consciousness into its suggestions while simultaneously harnessing the creative powers of the conscious mind. The above statement bears repeating, and I will do so, but in a different way so that that information can begin to sink in. Subscriber one and subscriber two are a part of a group conversation. Subscriber two had unknowingly made a statement that activated subscribers one's AI mind. Subscriber one's AI mind began to speak internally to the consciousness of subscriber one, his true self, his higher self. If you know what to look for, you can almost see the persona bill, subscriber one, zone out as the whisper campaign begins. I call it a whisper campaign, but it's more along the lines of hypnotic suggestions, suggestions of a hypnotist. Bill looks ahead, but he isn't really listening to subscriber two, to the Ted persona, because there is another voice in his head speaking. He's saying that what Ted is saying is not only wrong, but dangerous for the company and that he has to do something about it and he has to do something now. Now, does this seem seem familiar? Of course it does. That voice is what most people associate with as their own thoughts their own thinking mind. And so they listen. They listen to it speak. And of course, 
most of what it's suggesting is largely negative and suggestive of a reactionary response right now. The consciousness of the subscriber who is playing as Bill, subscriber one, is being hypnotized by his body's AI mind. And so, without thinking, persona Bill, subscriber one, speaks, reacts. I say without thinking because to Bill's consciousness, the voice of his AI mind is misinterpreted as his own thoughts. He never stops to challenge the voice because in an immersive gameplay reality such as this one, very few know that the voice in their head, the voice that they hear as their own thoughts, is not the voice of their own consciousness. Very few realize there are actually two minds. So they hear the prompts or suggestions of their body's AI mind and allow its autopilot to kick in. They allow the AI mind to wrest control of the body from their own consciousness. After the AI mind inevitably and efficiently escalates what should have been a benign interaction into a full-blown altercation, you will often hear people say, I don't know what happened. I just lost control. Well, who did you lose control to? Who did you give control to if there isn't another intelligence occupying your body's mind? Why do you almost always react in the exact same way others react when they feel themselves getting angry? The uniformity of that unconscious reaction is evidence of the artificial intelligence at work in all human beings' personas. One doesn't lose control when you think you do, when you zone out or start yelling, for example. The AI begins resting control of the body from your consciousness the moment it begins talking to you and the moment you start listening about two, three, five minutes before the inevitable altercation. The moment you tune in. And I'll use those words again. The moment you tune in. Tune in. Start listening to the channel of the AI mind. That's the moment you begin to lose control. Listening to it speak is how it hypnotizes your consciousness and lulls you into a post-hypnotic dream state, a sort of trance, and its suggestions are almost always negative. That's how you know that's the AI's mind, the AI mind attempting to hypnotize your consciousness into a trance, attempting to draw your focus to its suggestions. It is always negative. Why does the AI need you to focus on its words? Concentrated energy and the power of your focused consciousness. It needs your consciousness entranced, transfixed, mesmerized on its suggestions so that it can harness that energy towards manifesting the quantum realities with the most amount of emotional involvement for its subscribers. You can say that your AI mind wants to harness the ability of your conscious consciousness to navigate through and manifest probable realities into manifesting those probable realities with the greatest amount of emotional involvement what you could call drama, or what I choose to call suffering. 
for its subscribers. So I'll repeat that. Why does the AI need you to focus on its words? Because it needs the concentrated energy and the power of your focused consciousness or your consciousness focused. It needs your consciousness entranced, transfixed, mesmerized on its suggestion so that it can harness that focused energy and utilize it towards a manifestation of quantum realities with the greatest amount of emotional involvement or suffering for its subscribers. Remember in previous episodes, I spoke about there being an infinite amount of probable realities for your consciousness to experience within the simulation. I spoke about how all probable, all realities exist as quantum probabilities. That you just have to navigate your consciousness in order to actualize said realities that you desire to experience. It is the power of your concentrated, focused consciousness that actualizes said realities that you desire to experience. There is, of course, a catch. In season one, I spoke of the simulation being a construct of a futuristic society, a quantum virtual reality life simulation. If you don't recall, I would suggest that you please go check out that episode again and listen to it. Every game has its nuances, but you need to be aware of this one's. Boredom was the bane of that society's existence. They'd conquered disease, famine, death, etc. And you could say that they are largely immortal. But the one thing that they could not overcome was the boredom that inevitably accompanies eternal life and so they created this reality what sort of society what sort of civilization would want to create the world that you're presently existing in that you're presently experiencing clearly a world where the opposite of what we experience here is the norm You only simulate death, dying, duality, mortality, and suffering. If you're from a world, or if you're of a world, where all of that no longer exists. And that is also why the human body comes equipped with an AI mind, whose sole function is to manifest said realities. And I will repeat, its sole function is to harness the power of focused consciousness into actualizing quantum realities that contain the greatest amount of suffering or drama, however you want to call it, whatever word you want to utilize to describe. I choose to use the word suffering because ultimately that is what it is for its subscribers at any given event. Its purpose is to actualize said realities that engage intense emotions such as fear, anger, lust, addiction, jealousy, wrath, doubt, indignation, etc. Because these emotional events and experiences serve to enmesh the consciousness of the subscriber deeper into the simulation. Said in another way, the AI mind's purpose is to channel the energy of your focused consciousness to actualize emotionally charged reality experiences for the sole purpose of enmeshing and immersing your consciousness deeper into the simulation. Its purpose is to actualize realities that engage intense emotions. And these intense emotional experiences serve to enmesh 
and immerse your consciousness deeper into the simulation. In other words, your suffering makes the simulation feel more real. Your suffering makes this simulation, the simulated reality, feel more real. Think of a dream you had. Which ones are you more likely to report as feeling more real? The one where you sit in a field of daisies and look at the clouds? Or the one where you're being chased naked through a dark alley by an unseen demon or monster? Of course, it's the more emotionally charged dreams that stay with you. The one where you're being chased, the one where you have sex with a beautiful stranger, the one where you watch your loved ones die or your spouse cheat on you. The dreams that have the most emotional impact on your psyche are the dreams that feel the most real and the ones that you remember even years after. The same applies to this simulated reality. Tell the average person that the reality is merely a simulation and you will be met with incredulity or even outright hostility. And how many fantastic dreams have you woken up from only to try to find your way back to? The AI mind is not your enemy. Or perhaps you could say it is only your enemy if you do not understand its function. So I'll say it again. The AI mind is not your enemy. Or rather, it can only become your enemy if you do not understand its sole function. It is simply a program whose basic function is to enmesh all subscribers deeper and deeper into the simulation to make the simulation feel more real. By harnessing the power of your concentrated focused consciousness and utilizing that energy to manifest the most dramatic, suffering intense, emotionally charged reality to be experienced by your consciousness. It is a necessary function of the story mode reality in which you are presently subscribed. As I stated, it is the most emotionally charged dreams that stay with you, that feel the most real. That is the function of the AI mind, of your body's AI mind. Unfortunately, that function tends to manifest suffering intense, emotionally charged realities. You will want to familiarize yourself with your body's AI mind and how it works. You can try this practice. First, sit still. Pay attention to what you see directly in front of you. Make sure you're alone when you try this, perhaps in a room, so as to avoid unnecessary distractions. Now wait. Now, because you're sitting alone in a room, chances are there are no pressing issues assuading you at this present moment. Or I should say at that moment. No drama. It's not an emotionally charged 
situation, you're alone. It could be said that you're at peace. But if you only wait a moment and watch, watch for the voice. Watch for the voice of your AI mind. You will soon hear it speak. Because in that present moment of calm, because there are no negatively emotionally charged circumstances directly occurring to you, happening to you, the AI mind will attempt to take you out of that present moment and either take you to a traumatic past that you've already experienced and recreate the sad emotionally charged moments from the past. Or it will create hallucinations or visualizations of negatively emotionally charged probable experiences in the future. Things to worry about that might happen. Things to cause you fear and anxiety and worry. It will start creating set visualizations. Now, if it can get your consciousness to become entranced in its suggestions by replaying scenes from the past or creating scenes of probable frightening futures, it can then utilize the power of your concentrated focused consciousness to make the body feel that anger, that fear, sorrow, shame, lust, guilt, etc. that you've either already experienced in the past or that you fear you might experience in the future just as you're sitting right there. And as you sit there listening to its suggestions, you begin to feel the anger, the sadness, the fear, the annoyance, or whatever emotion, whatever charged emotion the AI mind is putting you through, through its visualization process. At that point, You're no longer in control. After all, who would choose to consciously suffer continuously something they only ever had to suffer once, as in the case of something that happened in the past, or choose to suffer continuously for something in the future or in a probable future that may never even happen. As in the case of the mind projection to an improbable future. That is your body's AI mind's function. It makes the simulation feel real. The moment you begin to listen to it is the exact moment the hypnotic suggestions begin until you soon find yourself just sitting in a room with nothing happening, feeling angry, sad, fearful. Never once does it occur to you that none of what you're presently feeling is actually real. that your body is reacting merely to suggestions and hallucinations projected by your body's AI mind. It feels real because your AI mind has channeled your consciousness and is using that energy to make everything visceral. In Buddhism, it is said that attachment causes suffering. In a way, that is true. If you do not become conscious of the simulated nature of this reality, if you become attached 
to everything that you experience and accept it as real, then you will suffer. If you are in a dream and you don't know that you are dreaming and that you dream that your grandmother has died, you will of course suffer because you are attached to the concept of death being the finality of all things. You are attached to the image of your grandmother in that dream reality. And as your actual grandmother and you are attached to the dream and you're treating that dream as real, even though your actual grandmother is still very much alive in your waking reality. And sometimes even when you do wake up, you may find yourself still crying because a part of you is still attached to the false memory of your grandmother dying in the dream. And so you continue to suffer because the suffering was what made that dream feel real even after you've woken up. Now, the reverse of that is also true. Suffering causes attachment. Suffering causes attachment. Suffering causes attachment. On a macro level, if you were given a Ferrari on your 16th birthday without having to do anything to earn it, you will have no attachment to the vehicle because it has no value to you. And it has no value to you because you did not have to suffer for it. As is the nature of things and experiences in this reality, if you had to suffer for many years to be able to afford that very same Ferrari, suddenly you do become quite attached to that same vehicle. The same applies to how the AI mind works. Ultimately, its purpose is to get subscribers attached and enmeshed and meshed to this reality. And so it hijacks your consciousness and utilizes the energy of that hijacked focused consciousness to manifest the realities with the greatest amount of suffering. I keep repeating that. And the reason why I keep repeating that is because once you catch your mind shifting and to begin listening, I want you to understand that every moment you spend listening, you are diverting energy towards allowing the AI mind to manifest realities with the greatest amount of suffering for you. The AI mind wants you attached to the simulation. So when subscriber one and subscriber two from earlier, personas Bill and Ted, are screaming at each other across their boardroom table, or days later when Ted is dealing with the blowback of creating a quote, hostile work environment, Or days after that, when Ted is now having to find a new job because he insulted Bill, his superior at work, the AI minds of both will continuously lull both of their consciousness into trance-like states, replaying that altercation over and over again, days, weeks, and even months later, making Bill and Ted feel the same anger, fear, embarrassment, annoyance, etc. Making the trivialities of a simple difference of opinion feel like an epic tragedy or a nightmare that neither can awaken from. That is until their AI mind does the same thing with yet another situation and then another and then another. It will probably never occur to either of them to question the nature of their reality. 
while going through these Sisyphus-like trials. I will repeat, through all of these emotionally charged events strung together and called a life, because their consciousness has been hijacked and successfully enmeshed into the largely AI mind's driven reality experience, it will probably never occur to either Bill or Ted to question the nature of the reality that they found themselves in. And thus their AI minds, their body's AI minds, has performed its function perfectly. You may now be wondering, how do you prevent the hypnosis of your consciousness by your body's AI mind? How do you prevent your body's AI mind from wresting control of your psyche away from your consciousness? In the previous book, I did mention some books. However, in the previous episode, I did mention some books. However, the first and most important step is, of course, recognizing and acknowledging the existence of your body's AI mind. In the tagline for this podcast, I stated that the greatest trick AI ever pulled is convincing the world that it doesn't already control our reality. I'm going to take that one step further and say The greatest greatest trick AI ever pulled was convincing you that the voice in your head is a manifestation of your own consciousness, that it's your own thoughts. If your whole life is spent unknowingly subjected to the hypnotic suggestions of your AI mind, you will experience a life driven by the AI mind's constant reactivity to external circumstances and the suffering that comes with that. Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. I'm going to take that quote one step further by saying that until you make yourself conscious of the unconscious AI mind, until you become conscious of the unconscious AI mind operating in you, it will direct your life and you will call that fate. So one way to prevent your body's AI mind from lulling your consciousness into a trance-like state is by becoming aware of its existence, of its function, and of its ability to do just that. Once you're aware of its existence and its functions and its MO, you must next learn to recognize when it has been activated and identify when it is speaking. It will always be negative. You can think of the AI mind like warm tongue in J.R.L. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. It persuades through lies, deception, flattery, and manipulation. It criticizes, condemns, and complains, and is constantly fault-finding. That's how you recognize and identify your body's AI mind. For example, your spouse asks you to pass the remote control. You reach for the remote control, And the moment you grasp it, the AI mind begins its whisper campaign. You can't say please. It starts. And that's the moment you tune in. And the moment you tune in, it has you. And if you continue listening, it will continue criticizing, suggesting, lulling, hypnotizing. It will continue to be negative. You know, it never used to be like this, you know. She's already taking you for granted after you got married. That's the AI mind. Disengage. 
that is not you. That is the AI mind attempting to hijack your consciousness and manifest the quantum reality experience with the greatest amount of suffering. Because its function is to enmesh your consciousness deeply into the simulation. And the most efficient way for it to do so is by hijacking your consciousness and using the energy to manifest emotionally charged quantum realities. As soon as you hear the voice speaking, disengage listening to it. It will only bring about suffering from that point. If it is criticizing, condemning, or complaining, that is how you identify it. That is how you make yourself conscious of its function, and that's how you disengage. Another tactic the AI mind utilizes is that it takes you out of the present moment. If you are not experiencing an emotionally charged event in your present moment, you can count on the AI mind to hook your attention and project you to an emotionally charged hallucination of either a future event or regress you to a past emotionally charged event and replay those events in a loop, making your consciousness relieve the negative emotions and past sufferings. That is the AI mind's function. If you find yourself mentally reliving past traumatic events over and over again, or hallucinating an emotionally traumatic probable future, the AI mind has you entranced. Disengage. Learn to pause before speaking. Count to five if you have to. By doing so, you will typically be able to hear what response your AI mind has already prepared for you. It's usually very confrontational and more than likely negative or critical or judgmental. And with practice and observation, you will find it is almost always ready or crafted rather to trigger a negative reaction in other individuals oftentimes activating their AI minds, activating the AI minds in other individuals as well. All AI minds are a part of the simulation's hive mind and they work in tandem to enmesh all subscribers in emotionally charged experiences increasing their attachment to the simulation. The most efficient way to counter this, the most efficient way to counter this enmeshment is by saying nothing at all. Another practice to disengaging from the AI mind's attempts to lull your consciousness into a trance-like state and manifest realities with the greatest amount of suffering is to shift your focus away from the voice of the AI mind through the repetition of a mantra. Now you can Google mantras that you would like to repeat and try them out. You can even use the Beatles' George Harrison's mantra if that suits you. It doesn't have to be in English, but it can be. It just has to be something that you can remember to repeat the moment you notice or recognize your body's AI mind begin its attempts at hypnotic suggestion. Shift the focus of your consciousness, consciousness away from the AI voice and begin repeating the mantra. Now, Eventually with practice, you want to get to the point where you can shut down the voice altogether without the use of a mantra but the mantra can get you on that path 
You can also use the negative emotions brought on by the AI mind's suggestions. You may have unknowingly locked on to as a signal that you are being entranced and as a reminder to wake up out of the hypnotic suggestion. I said that kind of weird, so I'll say that again. You can also use the negative emotions brought on by the AI mind suggestions that you might have unknowingly locked onto as a signal that you are being entranced and as a reminder to wake up out of that hypnotic suggestion. Author Eckhart Tolle states in his book, The Power of Now, whenever you notice that some form of negativity has arisen within you, look on it not as a failure, but as a helpful signal that it is telling you, wake up, get out of your mind, be present. Alternatively, when you observe the same negative reactions in other people, recognize that their consciousness has been entranced by their body's AI minds and that they are no longer in control. Do not engage at that point because their AI minds has the exact same function as yours, which is to hijack the creative power of their consciousness consciousness and manifest realities with the greatest amount of suffering for its subscribers in order to immerse their conscious consciousness deeper within the simulation to make their experiences feel more real if you engage their ai mind you will activate your own And before you realize it, you will be sucked into the cycle of suffering. In these circumstances, it is best to remain silent and repeat your mantra or focus on your breathing or remove yourself from the situation. Because at that moment, you are not interacting with a conscious individual any longer. Instead, their AI mind, whose function it is to escalate and maximize suffering, is at the helm. The simplest of all these approaches, though, is simply recognizing and silencing the AI mind. You can do so by observing it, by shining the light of your consciousness on it, It thrives by getting you to identify with it. It operates most effectively if you accept its suggestions as your own thoughts. If you're able to catch it the moment it begins to whisper and you can say, here I am, and that is another voice that is not my own. Here I am, and here I am listening to this other voice it will begin to lose its hold over you. Your husband asks you to hand him the remote. The voice of your body's AI mind begins to speak, but this time you slow down. You slow down your reaction time. You recognize the negativity of its suggestions or the negativity of the emotions it's causing to rise within you the annoyance, the anger, the sadness that you feel. And you interpret those emotions, those negative emotions as signals that your AI mind is attempting to lull you into a hypnotic trance. And so you immediately disengage and simply hand them the remote. Some people feel like they need a life of constant drama, which they label as passion to make them feel alive. Perhaps there is some truth to that, as that is the function of an AI mind-driven life. But there is another way to live, and that is consciously. 
You can train yourself to slow down your AI mind's reaction time and eventually enough to stop reacting altogether. But that will take practice and that will take consistent effort. It will take time. You've seen the effects of living an AI-driven life. You've suffered the consequences of your AI mind's reactivity. You felt unnecessary fear, worry, and anxiety. You've participated in useless arguments that your AI mind repeatedly replayed, forcing you to relieve those negative emotions over and over and over again. If I locked you in a tiny room and strapped you to a chair and forced your eyes open, and I placed a TV set in front of you, and I made you watch the most harrowing, the most embarrassing, traumatizing, disgraceful moments of your life on that TV set, on repeat, what would you call that? That would be absolute torture. And how would that make you feel? Over days, months, years? Decades? Now, what if I withheld from you the fact that you could verbally control that TV set? That that TV set and that contraption that keeps you strapped to the chair, that's keeping your eyes open and keeping the door locked, that all these things were controlled by you and that with sheer force of your will, you can pause and eventually turn off the TV set that you can eventually close your eyes, free your hands and your feet, and walk right out of that room. Wouldn't you want to do just that? That room is an analogy for how your body's AI mind holds you transfixed. The moment it begins speaking to you, you can imagine being led into a room by someone who looks just like you, and sounds just like you, but maybe more mechanical, robotic, predictable. Her or his movements are gentle, yet efficient, cold. You trust her or him because, well, it looks and sounds just like you, so it must be you. And as he or she continues speaking, you begin to feel a bit more drowsy. It straps you into the chair, the legs first, then arms, hands, waist. She or he places a contraption on your head that forces your eyes open. The TV set is rolled in front of you. Your mechanical doppelganger hits play. And there you are, trapped, watching past trauma and projections of improbable future events. And you can't move. You're not even aware that you're trapped. You stare ahead on blinking, feeling the fear, anger, suffering. Slowly, the doppelganger walks out of the room and out to the control center of your quantum computer that is your brain, readying itself to impersonate you harnessing the power of your focused consciousness and using that to manifest probable realities with the greatest amount of suffering to be experienced by you. Some people will spend their whole lives in that chair, in that proverbial chair never knowing that they can at any time learn to get up and leave. I'm reminded of the scene in the movie Get Out, where Chris, the main character, is strapped to the chair while he's being forced to relive his memories of the death of his mother. But then he stuffs his ears with cotton, breaks free of the chair, and eventually frees himself from his kidnappers. I'm saying you can learn to do the same. 
to start in a way with a sort of cotton to block your ears, unstrap the chair. You do not have to go as far as to violently attack your body's AI mind, of course. It is simply a program executing, or I should say executing, its function. You cannot harm it without harming yourself. Many have attempted to curtail it with violence, but they have merely harmed themselves in the process and strengthened the AI mind's grip over their psyche. Remember that its function is to enmesh your consciousness deeper into the simulation by using mostly negative, emotionally charged events. So, attempting to harm yourself is the perfect negative, emotionally charged event. Others have attempted suicide in order to stop its whispers, its taunts, its torture, or what they interpret as that. But they've simply found themselves right back in the simulation, perhaps in a different body, or their consciousness just transferred to a parallel multiverse wherein they survived that suicide attempt. And the function continues. Occam's razor states that the simplest solution is oftentimes the best. And with your body's AI mind, the simplest solution is simply disengaging the moment it begins to speak or the moment that you find yourself entranced by its suggestions. Like in the matrix, when Neo turns to the agents and calmly says, no. Recall that scene, you remember? Remember him slowing down the attacks, the onslaughts of the bullets by the agents And as he does so, he finally sees the matrix and the code as it actually is. I'm saying, say no. No. Slow down. And finally see the simulation and the entities within for what it is. This episode has been structured with a lot of repetition, and I've done so intentionally. It is also meant to be listened to more than once. After all, it took your AI mind repeating it, its same processes for what, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years plus of what you have so far experienced in your life. It took its repetition to get you to where you are now. So you're going to have to go through a counter repetitive process to break from the program. I wish you good luck.